we shall get started in about one minute from now. Stay tuned. All right, Sia from MBBS Bangalore, B Farm. Excellent. Thank you so much for the variety of audience we have. Today. It's about one minute from now. Stay tuned. Yes. We are live on YouTube also. So the recording will be available for you later on from the session. Don't worry about that. All right. Time is 6:30. Good evening, everyone. Sushmit, are you here? Please let me know. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, sir. Good evening. So, Sushmit, please stop sharing the screen for a few seconds. I'll just yeah. have a brief introduction yeah, sure. about you and then we'll get started. Sure. Just one second. All right. Sushmit is here, everyone. Say good afternoon to Sushmit and good afternoon to everyone, whoever is joined from different parts of India and the world. You, some of you are also watching us on YouTube. So good evening, everyone. Sushmit is speaking with in this webinar second time. First time he spoke about the NIPER uh, exams and how to clear NIPER and he gave very, very insightful talk on that. And today he'll be talking about uh, medical writing, how to get started as a fresher. So who's Shushmit? Shushmit is a you know, proud pharmacist. He has done his MS pharmacy from uh, uh, Niper, and then he's got 57th rank in the GE joint entrance examination that was conducted for Niper, right? So that's again a proud moment for him. And he has done MS in pharmaceutical chemistry. So, you know, some of you might be thinking that for medical writing, only pharmacology is essential or only pharmaceutics is essential. It's not like that. Even if you have a master's degree with any kind of specialization, it is perfectly fine to get into medical writing, right? So make a note of this point as well. And he is part of currently the indigenous team of uh, learning and development solutions under medical affairs business uh, unit. And he develops a lot of content with respect to different therapy areas. And these content are meant for training basically doctors, pharmacists, nurses, patients, and everyone else, right? So he is also, uh, you know, the speaker panel for the newly hired medical writer teams at Indigen. So he could be a point of connect for you, uh, you know, if you want to get started with your career at Indigen. And he'll talk more about that, how can help, he can help you out if you want to get started uh, as a career in uh, Indigen. So welcome, Sushmit. Uh, with that short intro, I would love to hear from you and also learn from you as to what how you started uh, as a medical writer, how you got started as a medical writer, what were you, your key learnings and what are your suggestions for everyone else who is planning to get into medical writing or who want to get started as a medical writer uh, in the industry, in the pharmaceutical industry. So would love to hear from you. Please tell us your story and how you got started. Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, first of all, thank you, sir, for this uh, introduction. It was, uh, it is uh, great to hear. Uh, and second thing, he, as sir told, he, how I started into medical writing, I would be like, I am happy to say that or to announce that he, when uh, indigen has been approached or indigen approached Sniper Mali for during our campus recruitment sessions at 2022 batch, because I was from 2022 MS farm batch. So that time, uh, actually, my father has watched uh, Manoj sir's video and uh, on medical writing and then my father shared me his video to uh, just to have a look as the company was approaching and i have to prepare for interview so through manoj sir's lecture only i actually i was inspired and i got into medical writing and now uh, it is a proud moment for me also uh, that i am here means uh, during last year i was on the listener side and now i am on the speaker side so it is uh, manoj sir also has a role on that so I would like to thank him also. And uh, also I would like to thank him for providing this opportunity for uh, taking this session or uh, by leading this session and to guide many of our uh, aspiring professionals in medical writing. Okay, so I will share my screen. Yes, please. Yeah. 
also a quick announcement for everyone else uh, you know if you're on zoom uh, the you know my zoom's capacity is only 100 uh, it's a basic plan that i have taken in case you are not able to join on zoom uh, please share that uh, youtube's link with your friends so that they can watch on youtube as well all right so thank you sushmit go on get started let's oh, get started. Sure, sure. okay so already sir has provided my introduction uh, currently i am uh, in uh, i am working as a junior associate in scientific writing at uh, in our learning and development solutions business unit of uh, under medical affairs uh, under medical affairs at indigen in bangalore okay so uh, let's get started so the key learning objectives of this session is uh, see the main thing main thing which i would like to emphasize here is ki how freshers or uh, how post graduate students in any of the stream like it might be mbbs it might be ms m farm it might be in the uh, basic life sciences like biotechnologist or any other pds mds every kind of life sciences stream so it will be i will concentrate mainly i will emphasize on ki how uh, the fresher or how uh, post graduate students or graduate students however they should prepare for an interview in medical writing and how we can get into medical writing okay so second thing for satisfying this first objective what is required we must uh, have some specific skills or we must have some attributes like we what we need to get into medical writing okay so major thing as you all know the interview is a gate for entry into any profession so you need to clear an interview and for interview the interviewer will be judging you on the basis of some aspects which he or she might uh, might be might be expecting from you all so that kind of things uh, i am going to tell you what are the things so this session is basically tailor made for uh, the post graduate or the students who are desiring to enter into medical writing and second thing he uh, the freshers in medical writing means what actually the freshers means uh, whenever we get into corporate what are the expectations from the corporate uh towards uh, the freshers in medical writing and thus if this is satisfied then your career uh, then your career will get progress and it will effectively progress not just progress it will effectively progress so all these things are the key learning objectives of this session so and first of all as uh, you all know if uh, during the interview time only if you are uh, like uh, you uh, during the interview preparation only you know ki what are the skills required for effective career progression so those kind of candidates are actually best fit and they will be like ki, they will be screened from around 80 plus or 90 plus into 10 or 5 candidates those who know ki how to progress well so everything is linked to each another okay so now as sir has only already provided my introduction so just uh, i'll keep it brief so okay so uh, i have completed my uh, undergraduate that is b farm from swaminand pharmacy college at uh, wapi which is basically in gujarat then i have completed my post graduation that is uh, ms farm in medicinal chemistry from naipur ss nagar and then i have moved into the corporate that is already, already i have told you my story like how i went from ms farm how i got this uh, indigen and how i was selected at indigen and how I was, how I got into this field of medical writing, how I cleared my interview that I already told you here. Yeah. So this is my entire journey. Now let us get uh, to my background. Like I come from a research background when means uh, for one year, uh, I have did my research work uh, in my at Niper. That is key. I have synthesized uh, this uh, total around nine compounds, which are targeting DNA polymerase beta beta and uh, it is actually for uh, synergistic approach for treatment of cancer and it was a part of international research collaboration with university of florida and our laboratory so basically what i did was ki, you might be knowing i will not get into much technical details but just to throw a light the uh, dna polymerase beta is such an enzyme which actually is responsible for repair of dna so whenever we give uh, alkylating agents or any other anti-cancer therapies or which uh, in basic sense we can call it as chemotherapy so chemotherapy drugs are like a major major one class of drug is like alkylating agent so they alkylate the dna base pairs and thus they damage the dna so this when the drugs or when any external agents damage the dna that time our body actually uh, tries to repair and that dna polymerase beta is an enzyme which repairs the dna so i, I have designed some several drugs 
which are DNA polymerase beta inhibitors. So that is actually when we give these agents in combination with those uh, alkylating agents. So it will lead to synergistic effect. For and second achievement, uh, not not uh, this was first was my research work. So this achievement in my research work was ki I have developed around twenty uh, methods, twenty successful methods for isolation of new chemical entities by automated flash chromatography. And I was actually the first master student among the department to develop uh, this thing. And later I was appointed by my professor to train all the junior students for using this uh, automated flash chromatography. So this is about my small background. And then uh, coming to my administrative positions. So uh, in academia, I saw around three to four administrative positions for student welfare. Like I was a placement cell head of my department. Then also I was a head of the web development committee of my research group. Then I was a, a social associate coordinator of uh, my alumni association of my department. And I handled the LinkedIn page. So I was the social network handling committee head of my department. And also I was the CR of my department. So coming to my achievements was ki at Indigen, uh, we'll go by the reverse chronological uh, order. Like uh, at Indigen, I was awarded in the hitting the mark for development of multiple high quality first drops for one project. And uh, the achievement was ki during the traineeship, I was awarded for uh, this uh, high quality first drop. So that is one of the thing. Then uh, also I was appointed uh, by my lead for uh, mentoring the newly hired medical writers. And actually I was the youngest member to lead the nine member speaker panel at, for guiding new medical writers at Indigen, which are hired through campus uh, recruitments. Then third thing was key, I designed and developed a website dedicated to my research group at NIPER. For, for that position, I, I was the in charge of this web development committee. And the most surprising thing was, he, I, that time during my post graduation, I was not knowing that uh, development of website or uh, authoring the website or uh, entire content management of the website is actually comes under the medical writing. That time I was not knowing. When I got into Indigen, that time I came to know, okay, this is also the medical writing. So it was like uh, before coming into medical writing, I had an experience of medical writing, which, uh, it, which it was unknowing. <laughs> that is the thing. Okay, so now uh, let us get back to, uh, now let us move on to the presentation or our main emphasis of our today's presentation. That is C, uh, before uh, starting all this lecture and all what are the skills and what are the attributes which are needed, what you should do for effective career progression and all. So you must get an overview, like what is medical writing? If you know this, because uh, most of the audiences are final year students or they might be fresher. So for fresher, we have a later part of the presentation, but mostly they are the final year students and college students. So they must know ki what is medical writing. So in order to progress effectively and in order to uh, gain some insights, like what is needed, what skills are needed, you must get an overview. Ki what is medical writing? I will not go into deep, but just uh, an overview. Okay, so first I will tell ki understand the definition. It is not the definitions are usually meant ki, okay, they are given by some authorities or they are so we are we just usually mug up the definitions and we usually write to the exam. That is not the thing. This is not an academia. So so here I will tell you understand the definition, give what medical writing is. And this is defined by one of the premier organization of the world that is American Medical Writers Association. So I have taken a definition from that organization or what that organization has defined medical writing. So see, medical writers write, edit, or develop materials about medicine and health. They do this by gathering, evaluating, organizing, interpreting, and presenting information in a manner appropriate for the target audience. Each and every word is important. I will make you understand it later. Professional medical writers also have communication expertise, awareness of ethical standards, and healthcare knowledge. Okay. So now most important part of this definition is, ki, see, we write usually medical writer by terminology only we will understand that medical writing is something related to the medicine and it is something related to the healthcare or the pharmaceutical sciences, in fact. Okay, so the main thing is ki, we write for the medicine and we write for all the healthcare profession. It might be uh, it might be from patients are not healthcare professionals, but we uh, means our audience, target audience is also healthcare professionals so, and also the patients. I mean, everything related to the healthcare that I mean to say here. 
so they do this by means how do they write the material or how do they develop the material for medicine and healthcare they do this by gathering means first you need to gather if there see there are uh, there is a much lot of information which is uh, available through various sources so you need to gather like if for which area you need to write so you need to gather the information all the information must be gathered so how will you gather so that that comes the that comes into point so each and everything i will link it to the later part of the site but for just now i am providing you the overview to in order to understand the definition clearly okay so gather means you need to gather all the things like uh, what all the information you need to gather and you need to keep for your content then you need to evaluate now come here this evaluate is like uh, see uh, all the information which is available on the internet or on the through any of the sources it is not key everything is useful for your case or whatever content you are presenting it is not useful or first thing key, so that you need to apply a filter key, which one is useful and if you found that information is useful then you need to filter you need to apply another filter like you need to evaluate the information key, is it information correct is it not is it incorrect or how well it aligns with our content so that thing is known as evaluation third thing after you have completed this step you need to organize your content means all the evaluated content which has been passed through two filters which i had told you just now so that needs to be uh, organized into well and precise manner so that it can be uh, presented to the audience okay so this organization is over then you need to interpret the information is the organized information you need to interpret it well ki how uh, because see you are ultimately presenting your information to the audience so first of all it is very much essential that you interpret the information yourself and then you will be able to present it to audience so last step is like in uh, second last step only it came it is uh, interpretation interpretation and it is presentation so how well you present the information now here the target audience comes see in the first definition it is written it is in a manner presenting the information in a manner which is appropriate for the target audience means the target audience is your uh, is the scope means uh, your content must be tailored to a target audience sometimes it may be a healthcare professional sometimes it may be uh, uh, patients sometimes it may be for the regulatory agencies sometimes it may be for uh, any other uh, like patients healthcare professional regulatory nurses all the all kinds of uh, persons sometimes it may be for uh, even for the scientists well. so you need to uh, look at this key what is a target audience and how you are presenting okay so uh, till here just i wanted to know key, whether this definition is clear or not for everyone you can interact there is no problem i as sir and i always tell key, we need interaction during this thing during all these sessions Can anyone uh, speak up or can anyone type on chat whether it please. is clear? Participants, please keep interacting. If it is not clear, just say not clear. So one not clear so far and the rest everyone is clear. All right. So maybe we'll uh, briefly summarize Sushmit. If, yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. Thank you. Okay, okay, sure. So thank you for uh, giving responses. So see, medical, see, usually all the definition, if I just uh, summarize it, medical writer means to write something for uh, healthcare professionals or healthcare professional means write something for healthcare it might be related to the uh, patients it might be related to doctors it means all the other personals associated with the healthcare profession they should they will be our audience so so how do they do that so it is through gathering evaluating organizing interpretation and presenting so you need to gather the information from all the sources you need to gather appropriate information and then the gathered information you need to evaluate it whether this information is actually correct or not or whether this information is actually needed for our content or not so that means gathering and evaluating then you need to organize the content what will what should i discuss at the first point what should be at the second point what should come as the third and how to conclude this thing so that is actually the organization then interpretation he all the organized information everything all your content first you need to interpret it he are you clear with the content if see if i give you an example of anything if i ask you uh, mechanism of metoclopramide any drug okay so for any drug if i example if i simplest drug if i take a mechanism action of paracetamol 
and if i tell you ki you need to present this uh, to the audience so first of all ki you need to interpret so if i go from gathering so see if i give a example of mechanism action of paracetamol and you have to gather this information first if you need to search do you need to do a thorough literature search ki from where i will get this mechanism action and how it is uh, you must take the latest articles you must take uh, means all the theories which are actually uh, means tested so those kind of things uh, it comes under means gathering and evaluating so through through this evaluation stage you need to actually check ki whether this information is correct or not or whether if you take some any as paracetamol is very old drug and all so you may get the oldest articles also but you it is generally uh, taken into consideration that ki you will uh, you will have to use the latest uh, review articles or latest research articles for anything so that the information is later so this comes under evaluation and if there are two or three four theories related to the mechanism action of any drug then you need to organize it the first theory uh, means right from the ascending order like from uh, earlier theory what suggested then newer theory what suggested then more new theory more latest theory what is what is there so this is known as organization and this organized data then now you need to interpret means actually the thing is ki whether you start from gathering also because you are actually in this field because in this field only everyone enters into medical writing as we are all the life sciences profession so the interpretation word here means ki just clearly understanding ki whatever your information has been organized are you able to interpret it not and then you will need to present the information so so i hope this uh, this is clear by an example this is very general example i know that it is very old drug and all but just for the sake of clarity or simplicity i gave this example so now i think that it will be clear for everyone this definition so so can we move forward sir yes sushmit please we'll take the questions at the end of the session oh, okay sure sure okay fine okay so now uh, you understood about the definition of medical writing and what actually we do okay so that things you understood now it is clear now uh, we'll have to i'll summarize here types of medical writing and believe me audience this is very vast list actually so this is like more uh, more of a generalized thing or more uh, specific things i, I have given like ki, uh, more major major things i have written it but it is many there are uh, this entire screen will actually get uh, i will not be able to represent it on a one flow chart that many types of medical writing are there but here for the sake of simplicity or just as a as the audience is fresher so i have kept it limited and i have discussed the major uh, three to four branches of medical writing so first branch which comes here is regulatory writing which i have discussed here okay so regarding regulatory writing i will tell that ki see you might be knowing ki for every medication or every new drug which has been synthesized or which has been developed uh, which formulation has been developed anything any new drug which has been developed by any pharmaceutical industry has to uh, pass under the regulatory guidelines and has to be approved by regulatory uh, body appropriate regulatory body of the country like for example if the drug needs to be marketed or sold into united states then us fda is the regulatory authority if the drug needs to be marketed or it has to be uh, sold in india then our uh, regulatory authority is cdesco central drug standards control organization okay so each country will be having he, uh, its own regulatory authority so the thing is ki whenever any new drug has been developed by any pharmaceutical industry it has to be uh, it has to be taken approval or this drug application new drug application or all the approval has to be submitted to the regulatory authorities and then if regulatory authorities approve that then the drug comes into market so so here this is the role uh, of the regulatory authorities now here we come into play medical writers come into play because medical writers are actually essential or they are responsible uh, for developing this kind of content which is submitted to the regulatory authorities for drug approval process anything okay. so here comes regulatory now now if i come to the types of deliverables which we call in uh, all medical writing then deliverables in the sense key types of documents if i say it in simpler words so what types of documents do regulatory writers write so it is like e ctd modules they everyone might be knowing it is known as common technical documents then it is uh, clinical study reports prescribing information clinical summaries clinical overviews investigator brochures 
then it will be uh, investigational new drug applications, IND. Then it will be NDAs, like new drug applications. All these documents are there. They comes under the regulatory writing. Means that for short, if I summarize it, it is like uh, the documents which are needed to be submitted to regulatory authorities for approval or uh, for marketing or selling of the new drug in uh, that respective country. So those kind of writing that comes under regulatory writing. And medical writers, or especially if we call med regulatory medical writers, are responsible for authoring these kind of documents. Okay. So now second point that comes is medical marketing writing. So uh, first document here is like sales for training materials. Means medical marketing, what do you understand? It is like marketing some uh, drugs. Means uh, see, any of the drug which has been uh, developed or researched, that has to be, means which has completed its clinical trials or uh, so after phase three clinical trials, it is like the drug gets approved and uh, it has been tested towards the uh, humans. Okay, not tested, it is actually approved for uh, market or for sale after phase three. So the thing is medical marketing comes here like you see, doctors are present and MRs are present, all the medical representatives and all the sales, uh, sales and marketing team is present. Yeah. So the role of sales and marketing team is key. they have to approach the physicians or all the healthcare practitioners and they have to market their drugs there and they have to tell doctors or they have to explain doctors key, how this drug works and how why you should prescribe what are actually advantages of this uh, drug as compared to other competitors drug. So all these things comes and the documents or see this medical marketing persons or uh, medical representatives they also have to be trained. Okay, because how uh, how can they talk to the physicians if they are not trained? So the training or uh, the training materials which are designed for training this salesperson, they are known as sales for training materials. So this is one type of document which comes under medical marketing writing. Then second thing, it comes like uh, promotional materials, which is targeting HCV. HCVs are doctors, healthcare practitioners, if we can uh, 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 expand that. So promotional materials targeting doctors. So see, uh, there might be some drugs, I means see MR or any uh, salesperson approach doctors and there uh, uh, with, with exp explanation, the, he or she might give some supplementary materials to uh, for their reference later. So these kind of materials are actually promotional material and they actually promote some of the product. See, our customers are like, who are our customers? Our customers are ultimately patients, but we cannot directly approach patients. We have to approach doctors and through doctors, we approach patients. So our primary customer is actually doctors. So we need to inform doctors how to prescribe or uh, that way. So that is the actually role of the sales and marketing persons in any pharmaceutical industry. And the materials which are actually uh, related to promotional, uh, means to promote any drug or to train sales for the uh, sales for the team, then it is known as medical marketing writing de uh, deliverables or materials. And third thing is like e-learning model. These are actually, this point will actually coincides with the first point because generally now it is like e-learning modules are being used and they are actually employed for training of uh, the marketing person or anyone. So e-learning models usually we use for that. Then uh, here comes another uh, division that is medical communications. So in medical communication, now see uh, the main definition of this is like keep medical communication by word only you will understand it is something related to communication of medical information means something healthcare related info or any pharmaceutical science or medical science it is to be communicated with someone so that comes under medical communication and for that for any document which are related to medical communication or which are used to communicate scientific or pharmaceutical information towards any target audience so these documents come under the medical communications and these documents are usually like slide decks, abstracts, posters, manuscripts. So see slide decks, it is very generalized term. Like uh, if you are going to some conference, if doctors have to present their research or they have to present something on conference, then uh, slide decks have to be designed for them. So, so this comes under medical communication. Then there are some abstracts, then posters, infographics, then manuscripts. This it, it might be publications also like some company there is an in-house trend in-house plan. See here in medical writing now there are two types of uh, companies. One is like own pharmaceutical company and another one is the like IT industry like uh, indigen or any all the other industry. 
so it industry is usually uh, uh, the clients are uh, this kind of thing the clients are pharmaceutical industry and second thing is ki in pharmaceutical industry their own research has to be uh, presented somewhere or their own research has to be published so for that reason this manuscripts and publications and all are needed and in it industries also it same thing is needed but the the thing is ki we do or uh, we do or uh, or any of the it industry does for their clients and their clients is pharmaceutical and in the second sense the pharmaceutical industry it, it is called as in house so in house guidelines and uh, in house plant it comes into uh, role in medical writing then uh, second thing uh, or the fourth thing fourth classification is medical education so here also e learning modules come just the difference is that these e learning modules are actually dedicated for medical education or they are actually dedicated to training of any uh, academy it is really Uh, related to some academic uh, books if uh, if in medical education you need to develop some textbooks or you need to develop some of the materials which are used for training of uh, person so that kind of things comes under medical education so e learning models are so one part textbooks are so one part and this is continued medical education that is also another part okay so here it's like brief overview of the medical writing and trust me these are only major types which i have listed there are many other types like safety writing that comes under pharmacovigilance and other other types are also present there is an hur also right now uh, this health economics and outcome research this field also blooming and medical writing has been developed for hur also heva also everything so these are so uh, types here major types are listed to just get an overview okay so now we'll go on cracking medical writing interviews means uh, as i earlier only discuss during my introduction or uh, on our key learning objective slide it to in order to get into any field interview is very crucial means it is and for especially for fresher it is very crucial not for fresher especially for college student it is very crucial because college students are like we are totally aligned towards academia because i was also uh, i have one year experience in just now today only i have completed my one year work anniversary so i can relate myself like ki how students what are the perspectives of students regarding the interview so i i understand is the cracking interview or preparing for interview during our academic time and uh, when we gain experience that is little bit different so so the thing is it is aligned towards i means how a student should crack the interview or how what are actually required because cracking interview is the main thing or the main gate gateway towards entering into the field and especially for fresher it is like many candidates are there and you need to get filter around for from them and only trust me like in mnc companies or there are stringent selection criteria is there so kindly focus on this part men okay so now key aspects of uh, interview I means say i will just discuss like ki, what are the aspects or what any interviewer any interviewer which is present to take your interview what he or she might demand from you or what is expected from you as a college student also first thing it is a strong scientific expertise because as you are medical writer as i already told you in the definition part also it is writing or communicating pharmaceutical or healthcare or any medical medical science to the audience so first and foremost thing which is important is ki you need to have a strong scientific expertise on your topic on your topic in the sense ki if you are master student then whatever you are you are doing the research it is not ki they are not going to expect you ki okay our therapeutic area is oncology or our therapeutic area is so and so it is endocrinology or it is gastroenterology then you need to be expert on this area okay so that is not the thing you need to be expert on your area of research ki whatever area your project is whatever area your m farm or ms farm uh, whatever your post graduation area is what have you research so in that area therapeutic area you need to be uh, you need to show your expertise because the main thing is ki see if uh, anyone will sit for an uh, interview and if uh, if and if for personally also you just uh, assume yourself ki you are interviewing some candidates there so empathy is the main thing you need to understand this is the main thing ki when you are thinking ki i am i will give the interview then you need to first think like ki uh, self as an interview like ki, if i am the interviewer what i will expect from candidates so what you are going to expect you are going to expect strong scientific expertise see uh, if you are interviewing some candidates and he he told that ki he is uh, he has done a research project in oncology 
and if he doesn't know simple things about oncology or very simple minor concept then uh, will you be comfortable for hiring uh, anyone it is not possible right you you cannot hire anyone he, those who has not uh, scientific expertise or those uh, means he is telling he is working on this area but he, uh, he is not able to answer even a simple question so that is not the case so this thing you need to learn if whatever project you are doing you need to show your expertise in that or whatever you have done you need to tell them or effectively present them second thing building an engaging scientific story now the thing is ki see when in academia our research work or whatever you are doing your dissertation or your project everything it is like it is a vast thing and uh, you just have around 15 to 20 minutes of your interview to impress your interviewer to this thing so how can you expect ki your 6 months or 7 months work in just 15 to 20 minutes so you need to build some story like story means see uh, that is only related to the amwa definition that is organized okay i will uh, don't worry i will relate each and every slide with the amwa definition because this amwa definition is so comprehensive and it is actually exact thing like ki each and every skills or each and every concept is related to some of the other part of the amwa definition of medical writing so build an engaging scientific story it is related to the organizing the information if you have to present a 6 to 7 months work in front of the interview in 15 minutes then uh, how would you expect someone ki uh, if he or himself is not able to explain his work uh, or he or himself is not able to organize his work then how it will be effectively presentable and how the interviewer can understand what have you done so it is the main thing ki you need to build some storytelling storytelling is important means i am not telling a storytelling means ki telling anything fake or that way it is not uh, that whatever you have done be genuine be yourself and the thing which whatever you have done you need to present it in a effective manner and you need to and for presentation you need to build an engaging story means the it should have a sequential step and uh, your research work. so that sequential step you need to uh, present it before the uh, interview so first two point is clear and the last point is also i have explained you in the, this only if when you build a scientific story the next part is effectively present the here confidence and all the soft skill related things come uh, into the room so these are actually key aspects of interview of any medical writing interview or any of the interviewer which uh, freshers can means uh, any interviewer which uh, who can expect these things from the fresher if you satisfy with these three things then you are among the top most candidates in the interview and no one will actually uh, uh, become a hurdle or no one can actually reject you if you have these things provided they have the vacancy okay now uh, this attributes demanded for the hiring okay so see now i divided this kind of attributes into two parts one is the technical abilities and another one is the soft skill related so in the technical abilities it is all related to the pharmaceutical science or your academia or all our, our don what what field we are and soft skill related i will come to with that later so scientific understanding i have already explained you in the previous slide ki you need to be thorough with your work whatever you do that you have to be thorough it is not like ki all other uh, you need to be expert in multiple areas whatever you have done you need to be thorough second thing ability to explain complex information so see your research work or all these things scientific information it is actually complex and pharmaceutical information or healthcare information you build it is actually complex because all you are from this field you everyone knows it is complex information so this complex information your ability to present or make transform this complex information into simpler example uh, simpler information and in a legible manner so that is actually tested by the by the interviewer ki how able you are able if i tell you some complex mechanism action of any of the drug then how able you are if there are three to four theories as i have given you previous example only if there are three to four theories regarding any mechanism action of any drug then uh, interviewer might test you ki how able or how you are good at making those or transforming those information into simpler thing and then you need to present it to the inter it uh, and mind uh, mind me this uh, presentation into or transformation into simpler thing it doesn't means like ki we have to over simplify the information it is not the, the theory as around 6 to 7 points and you are in a, in order to make it simpler you actually cut those three points and just explain uh, four to five points 
just in order to make it simple it is not the case you need to in, uh, explain you need to be thorough in your content and the content or um, all your explanation it must not be short and it should be uh, actually uh, transforming into easy easy information it doesn't mean key over simplification of that it is just key how able you are uh, how good you are able to explain that so that is the thing then third thing is key ability to organize information i already told yeah, how to organize information and if they are uh, see if i uh, take my example during my interview thing i was asked multiple questions so one of my round that involved was ki writing a clinical uh, trial summary or writing any research paper summary in that so in that summary there were actually two drugs and those two drugs were anti diabetic drugs and they their efficacy was been compared at that uh, in that research publication so i was asked by the interviewer ki uh, now you have already written the summary for those clinical trial so now you explain me ki what is there actually in the clinical trial and along with that you uh, explain me what are the what are the key outcomes what are the what did you understand from the study what is actually the type of study and what are the what is the mechanism action of these both drugs okay so these were three to four questions which were thrown to me now now ability to organize is actually tested ki what question i take first and what question i give another priority so that is the main thing that i mean by ability to organize information see i was thrown with multiple question like rational of clinical trial what did you understand from that what was the type of clinical trial then what was the limitation of that and then uh, you can explain the mechanism action of that drug then it is like it was actually testing my ability like ki what question i will take first and what question i will take last i was not been told ki you first answer this you second you answer that so so that is the kind of testing that that interval will test ki how well you are able to present the content or how well you are able to organize the information and that is also another thing organize that is the part of mwa definition written communication in science see the interview or the entire recruitment process of any medical writing industry see it is like you are writing the document so any written exercise has to come and many of the industries will keep the written exercise during your interview so so they during this written exercise you might be tested like how well you are good in writing and how well you are good in not in writing how well you are good in writing science so so the thing is ki how well you are technical ability how your technical knowledge is strong how you are able to write the information what kind of words scientific language you are able to use it or how well you can keep the information crisp and very legible and in, in order to understand that so this thing now here comes attention to detail yeah this is also very important point see their research publication has many has has very vast data if provided that publication is actually of great length then then you need to be able to uh, uh, means pay key attention to details there he actually what are the means what aspects of scientific aspects have to be covered and you should not miss even a single information from you and so that is actually attention to detail means if you are being given you write a summary of this uh, clinical trial or you have to write a summary of this research paper then how well you are uh, how well you are reading the paper and how well you are uh, able to uh, catch up this information or how well you are able to absorb the information and transfer it into the content and and it might be a minute information also if if the clinical trial is discussing about the efficacy of the drug it might have one of the limitation or it might have one small adverse effect which might be very less clinical significant but that also if you capture so that is kind of attention to detail and second thing is ki regarding punctuation regarding comma all the grammatical errors which are actually very minor and that actually requires attention to detail so it comes under this thing he where where you are putting the commas where you are putting the full stop where you are putting the semicolons how well your sentence structure is how well you are able to understand this minute information all these things comes under attention to detail then last point is focus presentation see focus presentation means ki your title or your topic it must not move away of your objective means if your objective is certain uh, uh, certain thing then how well you are not deviating from your objective that is actually uh, determining or that is actually testing your focus so 
so it is actually more more of a common it is tested during the verbal interview like if uh, uh, interviewer will ask you okay, uh, define this or if interviewer will ask you okay, explain this then how well you are not deviating from that topic because as you all know okay, pharmaceutical science is actually very much many of the concepts or many of the subjects are interlinked with each another during this thing so how well you are being focused in your subject okay, if interviewer has been asked you a particular concept then are you not deviating from that concept? So that is actually focus presentation. Okay. So these are all the technical abilities now coming to the soft skills. Level. So soft skills, the main thing is confidence. See, confidence is the key. Then I will tell you, if you have scientific understanding, I trust me, I have seen many students who have scientific understanding, who are actually good in science, who are actually good, or they are actually brilliant, but they, they have uh, less confidence or they are under confidence during the interview, then they actually suffer. Means what is the use here? Confidence is the key because what is the use key if you understand everything, but you are not able to convey it or you are not able to present that. So, so during presentation or during this kind of things is like the verbal interview it is, but also in return also it might play some, some of the other role because you need to pass this verbal interview. So it is not like you are good in writing and you cannot explain, okay, then you will be hired for medical writing. It is not the case because in corporate, you will not be always writing you. It will also show okay, how well you are interacting, how well you are collaborating. Medical writing is not only about writing the documents. Means, means it is regarding the collaboration also. How well you are collaborating with your team, how well you are in uh, collaborating with uh, other cross-functional team. So that is also the key. So a confidence actually matters here. And so confidence is the key. Means, uh, see, if if anyone, yeah, as, as earlier example, if I gave, if you are the interviewer, then will you hire someone ki who is not confident enough? Or if, if I, if I sit for hiring or if sir sits for hiring and, and we ask, ki, okay, tell me something about uh, yourself. Then it is like ki many, I have, I have taken mock interviews. Many of the persons I like my juniors or any of the thing, I have taken mock interviews for them. So Majority of students are facing like whenever I ask the question, okay, uh, will you tell tell me something about yourself? Like they are not even able to tell something. Means uh, usually and students what they do, they usually prepare for that. Means even the thing I don't understand okay, why it is so. Means even if you want to tell something about yourself, it is not any rocket science question or even it is not for pharmaceutical science. It is like I am just asking you to okay, tell me something about yourself. But the thing is, ki they are confused at this moment. So this should not be the thing. Means even you are not able to tell about yourself, then how the thing is, ki you will able to tell about uh, all the complex information and everything. Even if you pass this question, tell me something about yourself. And if I ask you, ki what is your project? Then here also it comes. Like ki you know everything. You know each and everything. You are very good in your project. And you have done it in a, honestly. And everything, all the research data and every data you have. But the same thing, ki you are not confident enough and you can, uh, why during the interview, you actually forget, ki, okay, this I have done or I have to say this, I forgot this and that. all. So the main thing is, see, many persons or many students tell, ki, okay, I know everything, but I forgot during the interview. So why you are forgetting? The main reason of forgetting is ki you are trying to remember this. thing. <laughs> is it right? You, whenever you will forget, if I say, ki, I forgot this thing, that means ki, I was trying to remember something. And the main thing is ki, why you want to remember about your project or why you want to remember about yourself. <laughs> you already know what is the thing. You It is like, ki, it is not the question to prepare. He, uh, if I ask you, if person working for six to seven months in his research project from uh, around second year and first year he has done a thorough literature search, and if uh, I need to ask him and he need to prepare, like what is my project? It is not good. Nah. It, is, it is actually showing you ki less confident. And that is why you forget. Because you try tend to remember and you tend to write, ki, okay, I have done this, I have done that, I have done X, Y, Z. After that, I have to say that. If you come and prepare and uh, if you come to prepare and you just uh, write, if you uh, give your interview scripted, then you are going to forget. So it, is, it should not be scripted. See, now, whatever uh, any lecture someone gives, like sir gives many lectures, if I give lecture, and if many, many lectures give any talks or anything. So
so so uh, do you do you students think we come scripted we just write a script and uh, we just memorize it and now what i have to tell and now what i have to that way we do it is not the case if we come scripted and if we are written what now if i have written if what i have to say all these things then i would have i would have forgotten all the same thing if what i have to discuss in this part it is like uh, when the time comes it must come by your heart the main thing so that is actually been tested and that is not only for medical writing that is all for it is related to all the interviews but since our webinar is focused on medical writing i will be more focused on this and why it is most important in medical writing the thing second thing is etiquette see uh, if any interviewer will greet you he okay hi hi x y z how are you that way and you just say okay i am fine and and you are not greeting him he, okay how are you and what the thing so that also shows it okay that that is again coming to a first point you are uh, an interviewer will know that you are frightened from first uh, instance on and that is why uh, he will he will directly make a thing uh, okay he is not confident or he is like he is frightened so so if you uh, you need to be free and you need to talk to interviewers it is not like he talking anything or uh, or in any haphazard manner it is not that thing but just uh, basic etiquettes must be followed and and i know ki okay, everyone knows these basic etiquettes but due to the lack of confidence these etiquettes fall or some some of the other thing there is an off with your interview performance so that is the main thing which uh, everyone needs to be developed in order to succeed in corporate so, and third thing is transparency here it comes transparency like uh i have seen many of the person like preparing okay even they have not done that xyz thing and they write ki okay i have done this and they even uh, read for that ki, ki okay i have, even if i have not done i will just read for that and if interviewer will ask and i will tell that so that is actually and you will be actually trapped in this because interviewer who is interviewing you he is with a lot of experience he is with lots of experience uh, coming here and if you try to fake yourself or if you try to uh, not maintain your transparency okay and you try to show something fake okay i have did that even if you are not done and that interview might ask you the more questions or he might get into more detail because you don't know okay, how uh, what is the characteristics or how well is the how is the interviewer if uh, interviewer might think okay this question i need to ask in detail so and if he ask you in detail and you are you are not able to tell then here also the underperformance or your red flag it is one kind of red flag from the interview so be transparent don't fake yourself ki okay uh, you have to I means uh, you are not done that then so you are showing that so be transparent here effective storytelling it is one of again point which is coinciding with uh, it is actually in the for medical writing i am telling you this storytelling is part of technical abilities also and it is a part of uh, soft skill related also it is uh, for medical writing because see soft skill related uh, storytelling it involves everything right from your introduction right from your uh, research experience right from how you are present uh, from there that is soft skill related and storytelling in science means if any interviewer will ask you regarding a domain related or technical question then how well you are able to form a story and how well you are able to explain him or her so that is the storytelling so medical writing is a field like uh, storytelling comes under the technical side also and as well as in the soft skill related side also and uh, second last point is regarding strong communication as i uh, as i earlier only told you it is all related to the communication medical writing definition only involves the communication to the healthcare field and to the medicine field so communication is essential both written as well as oral because written you are going to write the documents and oral means you are going to collaborate or you might be means all the in corporate world and especially medical writing it is demanded like ki how well you are uh, good in collaborating because a single document it might it might take around many people to write a single document so how well you are able to collaborate with them with other people in writing the document so that is the thing and for that communication is required and last point is ki be yourself it little bit it coincides with transparency means you have to you don't fake yourself you have to be yourself whatever you have done you should you should maintain that and don't fake like ki okay when interviewer will ask what is your hobby or that way then you uh, you should and you everyone prepares okay this is a medical writing job so i should write my hobby like i should tell my hobby like ki science and communication 
not communication it is it should be a science and it is like ki giving presentation that will be the hobby that that many i have seen ki medical writing okay we should write this hobby that way don't don't do that way be yourself wherever the question is if an uh, interviewer uh, will ask you like what is your hobby then just ask your hobby only be uh, not ask you just uh, give him your hobbies only not to uh, fake yourself or don't like uh, don't try to align your hobby with uh, the jd which is there interviewer will understand he is, i believe me he is like very experienced uh, guy whoever is there they, they can easily understand uh, whether you are telling truth or whether you are not so it is all the thing means whenever you are telling truth it is actually building some confidence with the in terms of you or uh, interior will able to trust you so here yeah. so all these are like the attributes which are demanded for hiring which are very important for any of the post graduate student who are desiring to be entering into medical writing field so all these inter attributes and need to be shown in the interview then i can assure you that no one will stop you from hiring anywhere in the medical writing because these are the thing which are expected from the freshers here now let us come to the another uh, part of this session like ki effective career progression so so this this is actually uh, tailored for uh, freshers also who are into the medical writing field or who are who has uh, received campus recruitments or who had received any offer and who will be joining medical writing in this year and this talk and this section is also important for the aspirants of medical writing like uh, earlier uh, regarding the interview thing and all i told who are going to be uh, who are desiring for medical writing it is important for them also because in order to understand uh, the career progression if you understand ki how uh, what are the attributes or what are the skills which are required for effective career progression in medical writing so and that skills if you start showing in your interview also or uh, if you start showing to a interview also then no one can stop you from hiring and it is like ki you will be among the top most preferred candidate for the interview and second thing ki those who are the freshers or those who are just now joined medical writing in this year then they also need to understand ki what are the attributes or what are the things which industry is expect from a medical writer and how and those things if you satisfy then your career will progress that is that is for sure okay so now i will show you ki see in order to first i will link that only now i told you ki i am going to show you ki how your effective what are the key attributes or what are the steps which are required for effective career progression in medical writing so for this thing you need to be aware about what are the steps of content development and how medical writers actually work in corporate oh, okay so if in those steps in each and every step there are actually skills which are required so so each step requires a skill and that has to be satisfied and then your career is uh, actually booming and your career can progress here so now just now uh, you can focus uh, you can actually focus here if what are the steps for content development first thing is key scope of work okay whenever the project starts or whenever you have got something an assignment or anything so first thing you need to determine is scope of work ki for what purpose this document has to be written okay if i give you for example if any any of the project or any of the thing which i give ki you need to develop a content on this okay so you need to understand the scope of that work ki why you are been told to develop the content what for what purpose this document has to be developed why you will be developing that then why answer is done then who that is ki who is the target audience means this content has to be uh, is to be tailored for whom it is like who is your target audience is it for doctors is it for nurses is it for patients is it for regulatory authorities or is it for scientists or is it for marketing training persons or sales and marketing persons? so the target audience designs and the purpose of why you are writing this document this uh, designs and third thing is timelines in what time particular document should be completed or what time the particular project has to be completed so that is the thing that comes under the scope of work and uh, i request audience to actually pay a good attention on this topic because it is very important to understand the steps of content development and i will show you ki in what kind of this uh, one two three four five six six steps i am uh, telling you and inside that six step 
ki in uh, three to four step which are related to uh, medical writing means all are related to medical writing but which are actually related to the authoring of the content or writing the document so in each of that step that are uh, what skill sets are desired so i request audience to pay a close attention here and so okay so scope of work is the main thing if what purpose is to be uh, document is written who is your target audience and what are the timelines of your document okay then uh, target audience if i go you if i uh, give you just a short summary it is like a drug and drug which is binding to the receptor if any of the drug which has been developed by pharmaceutical industry or it has been uh, under research so target audience is like ki, what is your drug target why your drug has been developed and uh, who uh, to which receptor your drug is going to bind in order to get specificity so that is like a target audience to who you are going to target your content and that is actually through that specificity which you will be achieving later so in order to achieve that specificity you need to work on that or you need to design a document in such a way that it will target or it will achieve specificity to the target audience whichever it is okay now coming to uh, literature search after scope of work it is usually uh, all these three things are uh, finalized then it is literature search means from here actually you start your uh, writing exercise or from this step literature search step you actually start your content development and believe me uh, in literature search it is the one of the crucial step because uh, in this step only you will get to know or you are going to build your content means the quality of references which you are going to search or which you are going to gather now coming to the amwa definition it is gather okay quality of references which are you, which you are going to gather that will actually uh, be impacted or that your quality of entire document will get impacted on your quality of references so it is it is direct function of quality so the it is actually i will say that it is the important part of the content development that is literature search or how well you are able to search or how well you are able to dig into the science or how well you are able to achieve depth in science so that is actually essential in literature search or the way you are able to read it or the way you are able to understand see in for my introductory slides only i told you if you um, try to search for any of the topic in uh, healthcare or in pharmaceutical sciences you might get uh, many even uh, lacks of publications into that but but your purpose and the target audience or entire if i say your scope of work decides ki what articles is needed for you and what you what should be excluded so so that is again coming to the amwa definition gather evaluate so that is under the evaluate part ki whether you are evaluating ki which is needed according to my purpose or what is needed according to my target audience or the scope of work so that is actually first thing in literature search is gather and then it is evaluation here okay so once you know once you are good into this and you have search uh, you are again appropriate number of research publications for your uh, content which are satisfying or which are aligning with your scope of work and uh, purpose or target audience then you need to then your literature search is actually end and i will tell that ki during the literature search itself the writer must actually think ki what i will uh, uh, present in this content or uh, during the literature sir it is like a reading phase ki you are you need to read a lot upon the content you need to go into deep for your uh, entire uh, your publication or whatever you need to go into deep for your topic so whenever you cross that or whenever you approach that depth i will suggest that ki during that phase only you start uh, building your content means during that phase only you uh, not building the content means in the mind you just start from that phase only you need to look at ki, okay how will be my content or what is my strategy to present what will be the first thing what will be the second thing from that step only you can organize your content in your mind and then later in so that in the authoring stage you will not be facing uh, many much difficulties there so literature search is clear now now coming after literature search post this and now believe me this is very important because the quality of references which you are going to gather here and which you are going to evaluate here or which you are going to filter it here the content because see the content you are going to uh, take it will be from that reference only the content entire content will be referenced through your uh, gathered articles only 
so your content quality or your first draft quality is function of how well you perform during the literature search stage that is the main uh, key uh, aspect of this thing so this step is very important then it comes uh, authoring so for authoring i will discuss in the next slide also because uh, authoring requires uh, specific skills and all so there are uh, in next couple of slide i will discuss about the authoring so just short i will tell you in authoring involves just writing the content by word only everyone will understand and here you need to follow in house or client guidelines i earlier told you ki there are two types of setting for medical writing one is the in house pharmaceutical industry like ki it will develop the materials for their own research or for their own pharmaceutical industries then and uh, client will be like client based means it is consulting it, or it is an it industry like the clients are pharmaceutical industry and we and uh, the it industry the personal working there they develop the material for their clients yeah so these are two types of settings so for client thing you need to follow client guidelines while authoring and for in house content development you need to follow your in house pharmaceutical industries guideline for content development so this is the authoring i will come to it in the next slide for what uh, all the skills are needed then after authoring see after authoring you are going to send someone who is an expert in the field for review of your content so so after authoring the next step will be coming it as a content review so it, there will be two types of review one is by the sme which is sme means subject matter expert who is actually experienced in this field or he might be a senior medical writer than you and he is a, he is carrying vast amount of experience there and he is an sme so sme subject matter experts will uh, will review your content or will review your first draft and subsequently after your review uh, he or she might give you comments and then you need to address those comments okay then one review i told you it is by an sme what is it is related to the pharmacy Okay, looks like we have lost Sushmit's internet connection. He should be back. Just stay tuned. I'm checking with him. So participants, so far, how has been the session? Are you liking it? Was it interesting? Put in the chat box, let's see. Let's get your feedback for now. Sushmit is, will be back very soon. Let's wait for him. Shushmit, you are on mute. Sorry, uh, I think there was an internet disrupt. Yeah, there was an internet disrupt. Sorry for yes, that. Yes, that's perfectly fine. Technology sometimes yeah. goes into your hand. You are back. Sure, I'm back. Ahead. So uh, I was explaining about the review. And review by SME was over, right, sir? Yeah, uh, that that's what, uh, can you share the slides, Sushmit? It's not there on screen. Okay, okay. Okay. Yes. So participants, put in one word. How has the session been so far for you? Meantime. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, it is. Please make it full screen. Okay. Yeah. So many of them, they're putting the feedbacks. You can read the feedbacks. Good. It was good. Informative. Okay. Quite informative. Excellent. Good, All good. Right, perfect. So, should we continue and then we'll have the QA at the end? Yeah. yeah, sure, sure. Okay. So, now review, review thing. So, review I told you by SME review that is by for scientific thing and editorial review means it is by the uh, team, editorial team, which is checking for your grammar and sentence structuring and everything. So, so you need to address both of these comments. Then it will be formatting. So, see, your document it will go under many, many persons and it will go for the format check also. Okay, how well you are able to means how well so it is not it is not your part so that team will take care of that okay, how well you are uh, they will they will actually creatively announce that they will actually do some uh, means they will add some graphics and all so that is not related to uh, us but it is one of the steps and after formatting it is an final approval and final sign off by an sm so he is an experienced medical writer from the field so, so it is the steps of content development. Now, now each of these steps, it will come means each of these steps will require some kind of definite amount of skills. So that will progress here. Now see, now desirable skills. Now I'll relate with each of the steps which are required. First thing will be the domain knowledge, which I have been telling you from right from the interview thing. 
he you need to be focused on your therapeutic area you need to be you need to have a good amount of therapeutic area expertise or your knowledge and i will say he when anyone gets and when anyone enters into medical writing he or she must start building a therapeutic area expertise from the right from the beginning so so that will actually be helping you in order to be an uh, in one or two years you will be like an sme for one one area or your particular area so always try to become an sme so always aim higher so that so you need to actually gain the knowledge or you need to actually be an expert uh, thing in your area which are you are working in that document so second thing is ki you need to understand the medical terminologies it, every it is a general thing like if you are writing some documents related to pharmaceutical science or medical science you need to understand a terminology uh, all these things medical terminology so that is the thing start developing ta expertise from beginning that i already, already told drug development process see if you are writing for drug or you are writing uh, for any medicine area or any healthcare area you need to understand the drug development process ki what are the phases of clinical trial how it is developed what are pre clinical stage what is clinical stage what is the ind when it is when what is the difference between ind and nda what is means uh, what is the difference between phase 4 and phase 3 trials phase 2 trials phase 1 trials so you need to be thorough with the drug development process then regulatory guidelines as you all might be knowing there are each and every guidelines related to the country this is actually more specific for the regulatory medical writer but the thing is ki everyone should know the regulatory guidelines because everyone might be some or the other part they might be dealing with the regulatory document so during that time you need to understand about the regulatory guidelines and while developing the documents so it is essential so last point in the domain knowledge is the statistics you need to be uh, i will not tell you need to be a very much thorough or expert in uh, statistics you need to be expert in interpretation of the statistics see you don't need to know ki how p value is calculated but you need to know the in interpretation of p value ki if p value is less than 0.05 then what does it signifies you don't need to understand how odds ratio is calculated you need to understand what is the meaning of the odds ratio what is the meaning of the confidence interval so all these kind of statistical parameters you need to understand what is standard deviation all these things so you need to understand this thing here yeah, i am not telling you in detail uh, how it is calculated and it is not needed just interpretation is needed so that if any clinical trial data comes to you or if anything then any data is written then you will be able to interpret ki what is what does that signifies what that p value signifies that way then research skills i told you earlier it is literature search how it is important how well you are uh, doing literature search so that is actually a function of the of your quality of research then it is uh, staying updated how well you are able to uh, stay updated in your uh, latest information as i earlier told you ki whenever you are uh, gathering some information or whenever it is always recommended you have to uh, check for the latest research publication it is not ki Uh, you will check some older publications and uh, you are not knowing if the research has been happened in 2023 and you are referring to the publication who is 1996 that way and you are not knowing only ki, okay the, this is the latest research so don't do that you need to be updated and evaluate the information as i earlier told e evaluation is necessary if the information intended if you are uh, actually uh, the the thing which you know or the thing which you need in the uh, for the target audience to present that information so you need to evaluate whether this kind of information is actually needed for the content or not so that is actually the evaluation so research skills is done then language language i told you ki you need to be grammatically sound also here it is important for statistics it is good ki you cannot be sound in everything but you need to be inter you need to be good in interpretation but for language skill you need to be grammatically sound see because if you are a subject matter expert if you are good in uh, therapeutics if you are good in your research but you are and even if you are good in the presentation but you don't know how to frame your sentences and you don't know you see sentence framing is also very essential if you know everything but you cannot write a proper sentence then uh, it is not meaningful information is not presented to the audience so that is why you need to be grammatically sound also even though there is an editorial team who will review but 
it should not be like ki everything every work has to be went into editorial team only or even your document will also it will be of poor quality if you are not grammatically you need to use correct vocabulary then effective sentence structure and this is this is very much important ki how well you are able to uh, means uh, how well you are able to uh, structure your sentence to uh, convey this clear and legible information so language is like very important thing along with the domain knowledge because if you are domain knowledge but you are poor in language then your quality of the first draft it actually decreases and mind me their first draft is actually the thing or your uh, desire it is like one of your goal to impress the uh, your reviewer means it is the way the quality of your first draft is actually it is your first impression with the reviewer if your quality of first draft is excellent then the reviewer will also be very happy and it will actually lead to a good progress and it is actually leading to less work for the reviewer also next next it is ethics okay so see you need to avoid plagiarism it is a like all we all the life sciences professional it is a nobel profession but in medical writing also it has a separate ethics it has, this profession has a ethics separate ethics so first main thing is ki you need to avoid plagiarism plagiarism in the sense if uh, you are uh, taking some content from anywhere you need to actually uh, uh, recognize that author or you need to actually uh, give credit to that author ki this content is actually taken from there so it is like ki you need to avoid plagiarism so second thing is copyright compliance copyright compliance see in if you are developing some of the documents you need to be thorough about this thing see all the freshers and they are going to test they as as all the fresher they will approach the they will uh, do medical writing first time in their lifetime but if they see some publication with figure with figure and they blindly take that figure and they don't acknowledge or they don't even inquire about this ki whether this uh, whether this figure is copyright compliant or not or whether what we are doing it is it is following copyright compliance or not so you, even if you don't ask that question then it creates a bad impression on you the that ki okay uh, even though you are from college we everyone understands ki they are, we all are from college but uh, small small points will actually create an impression with your uh, reviewers or anybody and any of your subordinates or your seniors in the in the industry like you need to ask like ki whether uh, whether it is you need to evaluate yourself whether it is following copyright compliance or not or if not then you can inquire about it ki whether uh, we should take it or not truthful and complete information here the example is ki i will show you one i will just give a small example for is truthful and complete information if you are writing for any drug and you are referring to one of the research publication in that it is written the, this drug has a around uh, efficacy 80 greater than 85 percentage of people are actually cured and it is highly efficacious but there is uh, but and then next line it is written but the sample size was small so we can't uh, we can't uh, signify that whether these results are actually uh, we we able to consider or not and for example if you have to develop some content and you just write the first line if this drug is actually 85% efficacious and it is it is showing very good efficacy among uh, uh, among uh, patients and you are not writing the next line ki this sample size was actually small so here you are not presenting complete information i will not say that the information is not truthful but it is incomplete and because this information is incomplete it will it will uh, actually not follow your ethics so mind that ki these small small things are also actually observed in corporate and you need to be thorough about this thing ki what what are the things and how to present the information how to be truthful and how to present the complete information next is presentation skills as i have been telling you from right from the starting it is ability to organize and ability to present data complex data has to be made understandable and specificity for target audience which i gave is like ki here if one example if i simple simplest example if i gave for the specificity for target audience is if i want to develop a material for uh, i mean to say if it is for patients okay and uh, if anything is written for patient like uh, you need to explain the mechanism action so sorry if if we can cannot take for patient we can just take an example of scientist and a doctor so if you want to explain the mechanism action of any drug for them and one thing is ki you are presenting one content or you are developing a material for scientist 
and another thing is you are developing the material for doctors and now if i want to present the mechanism action of any drug to them for scientist level or who are actually based on drug research or based on chemistry level or any of the drug who are associated with the drug research will i i will be uh, able to show them in detail mechanism of action ki how this drug actually bind to the receptor what is actually the receptor subunit or what amino acid is uh, is in the terminal of the receptor and through which bond that drug binds to the receptor so that kind of information is usually needed for regulatory persons or those who are rela uh, related to the cmc part of the regulatory thing or those who are scientists which are involved in the drug discovery now believe me if i present this kind of information to doctors will they able to understand no right means the specificity for target audience matters if your material is related to the doctors and you are giving like the entire thing ki how the drug binds to the receptor and which amino acid subunit or which bond it makes so that is that is creating no meaning or even no one will refer to a content so for doctors you need to be super, be that way you need to be more uh, medical oriented or pharmacological oriented there that time so you need to understand the gaps or you need to understand what is the fine line between the or what is differentiating your audience and if same data you want you need to present it to patients see in patient information leaflets also you might have seen there is a mechanism action of drug that way so it is not presented in that much uh, in that manner ki if patients are your audience then you need to take care or you need to take care ki it what depth i need to cover or that what depth uh, i must provide this information so that is regarding the specificity of your target audience okay now before concluding this presentation now it is my one of the final slide for this thing is joining the dots i believe this concept right from my if i uh, if you might have seen if anyone was part of that niper lecture during that time also it was i have been i am been telling students like ki you need to join the subjects or you need to join the dots for everything ki one subject in pharmaceutical science it is not related to just one subject it is related to many other subjects also and how well you are able to establish the link between these subjects so that is actually the great thing for you and that will actually develop your subject matter expertise in the sector and same thing it is for the medical writing also so in medical writing i will be joining the dots between the different processes of medical writing and the different skills which are required for medical writing along with the definition which is provided by the amw so this slide is actually the conclusion or it is one of the summary slide for my entire 16 or 17 slides which i have presented for you just now so now pay attention to this now now i am taking consideration the uh, considering these steps into three steps major steps one is the literature search then you will be authoring the content uh, literature search you will be get uh, all these thing you will be searching for the literature you need to be planning for a content and then after this you will be authoring the content and after authoring you will be going to send this content to the reviewers and after uh, reviewers comments means if reviewer has a comments then he or she might give you the comments and then you will be again this cycle will get repeated and if reviewer is satisfied and he provides the sign off then it will go to the uh, any of the target audience or this everything will be closed and this loop will be closed but if reviewer gives the comments then this entire cycle gets repeated between literature search authoring and review i mean literature search why i have included is ki sometimes the reviewer comments are such that ki you need to gather some more information so so if such kind of things are there then you need to go again and do literature search for some specific thing which has been mentioned by an sab then okay now coming to the literature search so here you are going to use your research skills right and your research skills which i discussed on previous slide and that research skill through that through using that research skill you will be able to you are gathering evaluating and interpreting the information is it fine this is the thing means through research skill you will be gathering evaluating and interpreting your information then then after this literature search has been done now we will author the content now for authoring your domain knowledge will be tested or not be tested your domain knowledge will be used your language will be used your presentation will be used and the ethical skills will be all all these skills will come into play and then through all these skills you are going to organize and present your uh, content before the reviewer this thing and if reviewers 
uh, is satisfied, then he may close the loop or he may send, he may approve your content. Or if not, he may provide you additional comments and then again, this loop uh, gets, uh, means all this cycle gets repeated. So the main thing in this slide is, ki, now I have to give a final word to this, say, ki, every other, each and every skills is related to one another in medical writing. Right from the literature search to authoring or final addressing of the reverse comments. So every each and everything is related. And for each and everything, there are definite skill sets which are required. And through using that skill sets, you satisfy each and every objective of the medical writing or each and every part of your content development. So this, these are actually my final words. And these are actually, I want to present. This is the summary slide, which is presenting the entire content, which I discussed so far. So uh, here I end my presentation. So I am open for Q&A session now. So I will uh, stop sharing, sir. Is that fine? If I stop yes, sharing. Perfectly, perfectly, Sushmit. Yes, please. So that we can uh, interact and. Uh, yeah, love it. Thank you. It was a wonderful session. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Please have a glass of water. Yes, yes. Sure. All right. Thank you. So participants, I hope the session was good and you really liked it. I hope you got all the information that you are expecting from the session. And just to summarize a little bit, uh, you know, as to what Sushmit told so far for all of us here, one of the most and easiest way for freshers to get started into medical writing or any domain, you know, we are talking about medical writing here, but whatever domain you are choosing. So let's say you are choosing pharmacovigilance, you are choosing medical writing, you are choosing regulatory affairs, any domain, all you need to have the respective domains knowledge. So in medical writing, we need pharmacy knowledge, medicine knowledge, medical updates knowledge, basic research skills we need, we need language knowledge. Of course, we English is the global language now. Uh, we need to have conversant and we should have good English language capabilities. If not, absolutely no problem. There are a lot of requirements of uh, for local medical writers as well. What do I mean by local medical writers uh, requirement? These are the regional medical writers, okay? So let's say you'll be, you might be writing uh, medical writing content in Tamil, you might be medical writing uh, content in Hindi, you might be writing content in Urdu or any other language, your native language. So there are huge requirements for such writers as well. Right, so domain knowledge, uh, then comes research knowledge, then comes the language. Of course, English, if you're good, then and uh, you are also conversation in the local language, it's perfectly fine. You need to have ethics, very, very important. Uh, as medical writers, we might be at times, we might be writing biased information, uh, you know, when you are writing for a specific client or a specific product, but try not to be too biased there. Always whatever we write has to be supplemented with the right quality of information. Reference, that is absolutely important. Then presentation skills. Presentation skills, again, two types. One is, of course, creating these PowerPoint presentations and writing the content, designing and all of that. That is definitely needed. But when it comes to presentation skills, the most important skill is to understand the lang content customize it for the target audience. Now, who is the target audience for any medical writer? There are four major target audi uh, audiences, okay? One is doctor, pharmacist, nurse, patient, and regulatory bodies. Sometimes we also write for regulatory bodies. So these are our target audience. And the more these skills we have, right? So Sushu so beautifully presented this one skill set slide, right? So later on, you can take a screenshot of that and try to compare what skills you have or not. These skills are absolutely important. The more of these skills you have, the more it is better for you to get started as a medical writer. And so for many freshers, they ask, how do we get started? Now we have the skills, but how do I get started, right? So one of the easiest way for you is to use a platform like LinkedIn, right? Uh, use a platform like Medium, for example. Start your writing, showcase your writing skills. Write on any therapy area of your interest. Write uh, on a, any area of your interest, any topic of your interest. And once you write and showcase the skills, this becomes a repository of your work, right? Which you can showcase to your clients whenever they need it, right? So this is these are some of the skills that you need. If you have already uh, done your MPharm or PharmD or your MBBS or BDS, you might have your journal publications, you might have written some book chapters, you might have written some stories, uh, some content. 
that's those can also be part of this uh, skill set you can also if you have written some blogs that can also be part of this if you have written some newsletters you can also do that if you have not written anything don't worry just give yourself 15 days time write some content for linkedin and use this linkedin to promote yourself that's a great thing and many of uh, you know I, the writers that i know they they started completely freelancing they started their journey through LinkedIn. They connected to clients, they started getting their work and they started working with them through LinkedIn, right? Whatever you do, you have to understand only three important things in medical writing. One, reading, you have to read a lot. Lot means lot, just read, 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 read. Then you have to write. Whatever you read, you'll have to write for the target audience that you're writing for, right? Doctor, nurse, pharmacist, or patients, or regulatory bodies. Obviously, you'll have to summarize that lot of huge amount of content that you're writing. There are a lot of tools available these days, but in pharmaceutical writing or medical writing, we are supposed to use our mental abilities and not depend on these AI tools as such, right? And the most important thing for any medical writer is to be present. And what do I mean by present? Showcase your skills. Don't be in silo somewhere, okay? So these are some of the skills that we all need. And thank you so much, Sushmit, for beautifully presenting the key skills that we need. We'll take up a lot of questions from you. If you have questions, all you need to do is raise your virtual hand on Zoom and then you can ask. If you're asking, you can also switch on your camera if you want to. If you don't want, it, it's perfectly fine. You can ask the question directly to Sushmit. I'll also pitch in somewhere if Sushmit wants me to. If you don't want to unmute or talk, if you don't want to raise your hand, that is also perfectly fine. You can still put in the Question, uh, questions in the chat box. So we'll take some of the questions. We'll do it for next 10-15 uh, minutes. Uh, Sushmit, I hope you're back. Sushmit lost, lost the internet connectivity. I hope he's back. Uh, as soon as he is back, we will take up the questions. But for now, you can start putting in the questions on the chat box. Sushmit is back. Yes, so Sushmit is back now. Okay, so anyone wants to ask question? Krishna Prashad, all right. Krishna Prashad, you can unmute and ask the question. Krishna Prashad, you can ask the question. Please unmute and ask. Krishna Prashad, can you unmute? I've given you the unmuting right. You can unmute and ask. If you don't want to ask, please lower your hand so that I'll take on to the next one. Abhinash, you can unmute and ask. Abhinash, are you there? All right. Good to see you, Abhinash. Go on. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good, Good evening, evening, sir. Abhinash. It was a great session, sir. I am lot of I am knowing a lot of little say about medical lighting, sir. Thank yes, you for sir. Uh, thank you for the session, sir. Thank you for Manu, sir, giving me an opportunity to interact with Sumit Gogar, sir. Recently, I have connected with Sumit Gover, sir, for medical lighting opportunity. Excellent. Sir, okay. Yes, sir. Today, sir, I am applied the position junior associate scientific writing in their website. Sir, mentioned soft skills, uh, soft skills like client focus, result orientation, process process oriented. Can you explain about this? Yeah. See, it is like it, they are using the terminology as different thing. But it is coinciding with what I presented you in the soft skills part. What is the first thing? Result orientation. Result orientation is a broad thing which comes under like uh, see how you how well you are able to uh, present or how well you are able to drive the outcomes. Means what is the quality of content that is actually designing with a result orientation. Another skill set was client focus. Sir. Client focus. Now client focus means the target audience. Okay, means see your client is not your target on that way, but the client will be a pharmaceutical industry, right? Then pharmaceutical industry, uh, they will be a client. Then for uh, for the client focus, that means he, uh, whatever content, they need to show them for their target audience. For example, if the client demands uh, writing your content for uh, this, uh, this thing, medical abstract or uh, conferences for HCPs or for doctors. Okay, doctors presenting in the conferences. So that thing, how well your content is like, so you need to understand that your client's target audience is so and so. So how well you are able to drive the outcomes or how well you are able to present the content there. 
So that is means by uh, client focus. So there is another sub skill like result orientation, sir. Result orientation. Result orientation. I mean, ki, I think this uh, this answer sir can answer uh, most better than me. But I will also try. See the result orientation. What I understand, like, ki, how well you will be able to drive the uh, things, or how well you be able to drive the outcomes which are related to the writing. I Means, see, your content area is so and so. You are actually developing the content there. Then uh, how well you are able to uh, showcase that content and how well your quality of content. So everything it, uh, it is revolving around the quality of content and your target audience, uh, how well your perception is or how good your quality of content is. And see if client comes and tell you and how well you are able to understand the client's requirement. That is the main thing. You see, if I will approach you for writing any document, then I will evaluate ki whether you are able to understand what I am telling and what I need. That is the main thing. Ki, see, satisfying client needs is very much important. Once you are actually good in satisfying client needs, your career goes up that way. So right from the beginning, how well you are acquainted with that and how well you are able to take the steps that satisfies your client. That is actually the meaning of uh, the thing. Even sir can add to that as sir is more experienced here. No, no, Sushmit, you have just added whatever I wanted to tell. Perfectly said. See, absolutely. What is the target audience for a medical writer? So let's say if Avinash is writing on a project for Abbott as a client. Abbott is a company and Abbott's medical affairs team will be client, right? So let's say they have given a project to Avinash. And if Avinash writes 100% as per the satisfaction of the client, and there is a minimum correction or the update which comes from the client, then you have you have reached, achieved the result that you are supposed to get. Okay, and what happens next? The client for the client, you become a preferred writer. Okay, and maybe tomorrow, if you apply to any scientific writing positions at Abbott, then you get a chance to work with them directly as well. Right? This is what result oriented means. That means hundred percent result as per the client's requirement. Okay, I hope we answered that. So we'll take some more questions. Okay, without, uh, okay, so this question is for Sushmit, okay? So the question is, without any course, without any course completion in medical writing, is it possible to pass a interview in medical writing? Sushmit, this is for you. Of course, of course it is able to pass. See, yes. if you have desirable skill set which I presented you in entire this presentation, I, I have been repeatedly telling you guys ki, there will be no one to stop you from uh, getting into this topmost position and even in the good MNCs because in, in MNCs, no, the criteria or the quality of candidates which they prefer, it is like ki, they, it is very much stringent. They need actually talented and very uh, good old expertise holding candidates. So for that reason, no, see, I also not pursued any course. I have done my MS from in medicinal chemistry there. So I have been, uh, means I come from a research background, but I have not uh, pursued any course or postgraduate diploma related to medical writing, but I am in the medical writing. And yeah. now uh, I was actually appointed to lead a senior medical or to lead our junior medical writers. And I was the youngest of them. So the thing is key, there is how well you are uh, acquainted or how you have the skills. So that actually matters. There is no, once you, there is not any requirement or in CV, just you can add it in your CV. Okay, okay I have completed PG, PG diploma. But it, it is not like, okay, the candidate who has completed his diploma or the candidate who has not completed his diploma, they will be like different. Even both the candidates will be interviewed. And in some cases, if that candidate who has not completed his education or he has not any undertaken any course, he might also get selected because of his skills. Absolutely. Totally agree with you on this. So for medical writing, uh, you know, passing a medical writing push interview or test, you don't have to do any kind of course. See, in during this test, they want to assess only two things. One is your confidence levels and two things. The second thing is your uh, writing skills. They also want to assess your presentation skills, your understanding skills, your therapy knowledge, all of that. Okay, so as long as you are able to prove all of this, you don't have to do any kind of course. And tell, let me tell you one more thing. Most of the courses which are currently present in India or currently being run by different institutes, they don't provide you much practical knowledge. So that's a big challenge here, right? And the requirement of requirement for medical writing by these uh, companies 
is totally different. Indigene might be working on a certain uh, set of uh, skills, the same skills, uh, you know, if you go to any, any other company, the writing style may be different, the skill set required might be different, but the core skills, right, the four core skills that uh, Sushmit mentioned, domain knowledge, research skills, language, ethics, presentation, they remain throughout the same. So as long as you have all these skills, then you don't have to worry, you can simply start applying, okay? All right, I hope we answered. Thank you for asking that. Don't worry, Avinash, we answered your questions so you can watch the replay and get it from there. All right, Nirupama, you can ask your question. Could you just unmute and talk? Nirupama, this is for you. Yes, please unmute and talk. I've given you the unmuting right. You can unmute and talk. Can you hear me? Yes, Lord, yeah. go on. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Shushmit sir uh, and Manoj sir. You have, uh, you know, most of the uh, doubts have been cleared. Uh, the uh, um, I have uh, a bit of uh, medical terminology, uh, you know, uh, uh, been in that uh, field for uh, say twenty odd years, but uh, I won't say I'm deeply, uh, you know, knowledgeable about it. But uh, you know, the uh, communication skills and the uh, content writing skills and all that I have. I've been uh, working on uh, US clients for some years now. Uh, so what I want to really know is if, uh, you know, with this kind of uh, skill sets, uh, will I be able to apply for uh, companies? Uh, should I be confident enough to comply, uh, apply into the companies? And on what basis, uh, you know, will they uh, even send me an uh, interview letter? All right. Sushmit, you want to take that? Uh, yeah, I will try, but later Sir's input is also needed. Uh, yeah, no I'm a fresher and I'm not a fresher like one year experience, but according to that, I can say like, see, if you have medical terminology, if you have every kind of skill sets, you are thorough in your, in the science, you are thorough in the healthcare uh, related terminology, healthcare related concept, you know how the drug has been developed or you know what the regulatory guidelines are. How, what is the procedure uh, of uh, researching uh, of the drug research, how the pharmaceutical companies market their products, then you are in the medical writing. There is no uh, limit or there is no... As far yeah, as you can uh, easily regulatory affairs and all these are uh, way deep into the uh, you know terminology into uh, there, you know, maybe a B farm uh, student or somebody, you know, those in those kind of uh, fields may be able to uh, you know, give it out. Uh, these kind of answers will be easy for them. But what about people like us, like, you know, who have got uh, basic medical terminology, we know because I've been dealing with this basic terminology for years. Regulatory affairs, I may not know much because, you know, in even drug development and all that is something uh, which, again, as he asked Manoj sir also, if, uh, you know, certification would help in learning all these, uh, uh, you know, aspects of medical writing. Yeah. Right. So, so in that case, see, in that case, certification might help you. But the thing is, ki, uh, regulatory affair, I don't mean ki you need to go get into lots of detail, like ki what each other, what are the ICH guidelines, which guideline, the ICH Q3 guidelines discusses what, it is related to what, ECTD has how many modules and module 3 explains what, that doesn't, I don't mean that much in detail but just you need to know right key how the drug has been developed what are the phases of clinical trials so even if you are uh, you know that much information or even if you can study that much information there is no need to study each and every guideline in detail provided key you are not applying for regulatory uh, writing position so right. uh, you must need to know like key, how it is just the drugs are developed and what are actually the guidelines, not to go into detail for each guideline. So that is my answer for that. Uh, sir can add it. Yeah, thank you, Shushmit, for adding that. And, uh, you know, Nirva, for asking that question. See, first thing first is never ever think that you will be expert someday. Right. You know, that is that is not going to happen. I have been there in this domain for about 16 years now, writing for a lot of content. I have not, I've never ever considered myself an, as an expert. Every day, every project that comes to me brings me new learnings and new knowledge. We are learning every single day. Every new project brings so much of insights and knowledge for us. All we should know, all we should understand is how able we are to understand a content that is given to us. So let's say if they have given a clinical trial document to us, 
how capable we are to understand that clinical trial document and customize it for our audience. That's all we want to know. Okay. And expertise will not happen. Uh, if you are expert in medical marketing writing, it does not mean that, you know, you'll be an expert in regulatory writing. No, these are all different, different fields. They're all interconnected. All you need is to find out your sweet spot where you can justify your writing to at least 80% of your satisfaction. No writer ever so far I have met has 100% satisfied with his or her writing. You go to any seniors, they'll say your writing is okay, 80%, 70%. You go to his manager, he'll say okay, 50%, 30%. No one ever will be 100% satisfied with your writing. And if I give the same topic to 10 writers, 10 writers will write 10 different type of content. The essence will be same, but the writing style, the presentation, everything will be different. It no way 10 writers can present the same information in the same possible way, unless it is regulatory writing, which is completely template based. You are given templates and you are supposed to write some content based on that. Medical writing, medical marketing writing, or medical communications writing is all different. Right. So the presentation skills is different. Understanding skills, our understanding abilities will be different. Our writing and presentation uh, styles will also be different. So what we need to do is, so let's say you want to get into the pharmaceutical industry or the healthcare industry as a healthcare writer or uh, you know medical writer or medical communications writer. All you need is to just make a list of all the skills that you have right now and then see which industry you fit in. And then based on that, just start applying. You don't have to uh, wait till the time that you match all the 100% job descriptions which are mentioned by the companies. In no, no way we can match the, uh, you know, we can meet the requirement of the job descriptions to 100%. Never ever it happens. Because the job descriptions released by Abbott will be different. The job description released by Sun Pharma will be different. For the same profile, they might mention and use some different terms. So in no ways we can say that we are 100% meet matching those job descriptions. So it is not possible. All you need is to be confident that yes, given about 10 days or 15 days or one month in that company, I'll be able to learn those skills. I'll be able to you know uh, showcase those skills in my writing. And I'll not make the same mistakes uh, that I made in the first uh, art article or the project, right? So as long as if I'm able to, you know, innovate myself and upgrade myself to the next project in a better way, it's perfectly fine. So you should get started with that. So thank you so much. The uh, internships uh, that the, some of the companies are offering, uh, will they help? They do help in sharpening your skills and they do also help you to learn some things which we have not learned in, in, our, in our college education and which, which you have not learned in our past experiences. They definitely do it. But one of the most important skills that you need to uh, you know, get into medical writing is to showcase your skills. And how do you showcase your skills? One of the best ways to, you know, showcase through LinkedIn. You can also write, uh, you know, articles on Medium. You can also write articles and publish articles in journals. You can also write blogs. All of these are free these days, right? So, you know, pre-COVID things were different. Technology has changed a lot now after COVID. So most of the things, uh, most of the tools are free these days. You can get, uh, you know, give yourself at least 15 days, 30 days time and start writing something and start showcasing your skills. This is the easiest way. And if you're ta talking to some training institute, just understand what kind of skills they'll be imparting, uh, you know, what kind of projects they'll be giving you. If you are getting some live projects to work on, then it will be definitely good. So all of these factors you should consider whenever you are getting into any kind of training. And also remember, uh, there is, you know, there, there are a lot of training institutes which will tell you that will give you a hundred percent placement. It's all does not happen in reality. Placement, there is no placement guarantee. You know, colleges which charge 20, 20 lakhs rupees for the courses, they cannot guarantee placement to the students today, okay? It is only placement assistance which can be given. And placement assistance is what may be helping you to write your resume, maybe helping you to get the job vacancies. But facing the interview is something which no one else can do, right? Your skills, whatever skills you have, those skills you'll have to go and showcase to the interviewer, right? Yeah. So those are the some uh, skills that you need to develop. Once you scan through at least 10 job descriptions that uh, you know, you're know you interested in, then you need to filter out all the you know skills that are needed by the companies. Then you start working on those skills and then try to focus on your interview based on that. That would be my suggestion for you.
All right. Thank you so much, sir. All my questions are answered. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you so much for asking. All right. Thank Great. You. All right. Thank you, Sushmit, for answering. And let's see another questions. All right. So what is the pay scale for freshers and experienced writer in medical writing? Uh, Sushmit, do you want to say something on this? Yeah. Yeah, see, for freshers now, I will tell you it depends upon the institute which you are. The yeah. tier one institution space scales and uh, other institution that will differ in some other point. But I will be able to give some generalized uh, figure around. For uh, postgraduates, it is around uh, 3.5 to 4 that way it can approach. And for PhDs, it is around uh, 6 to 7 we can expect. And graduations are for uh, graduate students, they are actually less prepared for medical writing because since they are, it is a subject matter expertise and all research thing, it comes uh, in with the postgraduate and PhDs only. So that is a little bit different, but for graduates, we can expect around two to three lakhs. And sir will be able to provide the statistically significant figures. <laughs> statistically and, uh, significant. <laughs> I love that. Okay. So you know there is uh, there is no statistically significant here. It is totally dependent on two important things. One is your skills, and the second one is the company which is hiring you. And okay, uh, the second uh, important parameter here is not just the skill, also your educational level. So if a B firm is trying after you know graduation four years of degree, uh, the pay scale will be different. If a PharmD is trying, the pay scale will be different. A master's is trying, pay scale will be different. If a MBBS MD is trying, the pay scale will be different. If a BDS, just BDS is trying, it will be different. If it is BDS plus MDS, the pay scale will be different. Okay. So the salary ranges somewhere between 3.5 lakhs to 12 lakhs. Okay. And it totally depends on the degree. For uh, you know, recently one of my MBBS MD friend was hired uh, for a package of about twelve point five lakhs. He was just a fresher. He completed from the college, and uh, you know he was hired for a MNC company here in Bangalore. And next six months his salary will uh, be again increased to you know something else. So this is the range, okay? And totally depends on the company that you are working for. Another beautiful thing about medical writing is uh, you can do freelancing if you have some amount of experience. So, and freelancing projects totally depends on your expertise, your availability, and the type of content you write. Okay. All right. So, PharmDs, yes. Uh, so, PharmDs, uh, the pay scale will be somewhere between M Farms and MBBS. Okay. And I'll not reveal the pay scale here. It totally depends on the companies. Again, these are something, uh, you know, figures that we are not supposed to say in the public domain. But again, it's a range. Okay, so range is about 4.5 to about 5.5 range for families. Okay. All right. So any other questions, guys, please ask. Okay, one question is post-graduation in a particular field or any field. Any field is fine. Okay, as long as you are able to understand medicine, you are able to understand pharmacy, you are able to understand your target audience is perfectly fine. There are some, um, you know, medical writers who just create PowerPoint presentations. There are a few medical writers who just write uh, patient education content. There are a few medical writers who write content only for doctors. There are some medical writers who create training materials only for the field, that is the medical representatives. So it totally depends on what kind of field you have chosen and which company you have joined, okay? All right, what about uh, BPT? BPT is physiotherapy, if I am correct. Physiotherapy, yes. You also need to write a lot of content for physiotherapists and sports medicine and patients. So there is a huge requirement again, yes. BPT is physiotherapy, yes. All right, okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Any other questions, please do ask. I'll take some questions from YouTube as well. Hospital writing for patients. Uh, there is one question from Nani uh, on hospital writing for patients. You have any ideas, Sushmit? Otherwise, I'll tell something from my... Uh, hospital writing, sir, sir, can tell. That okay, hospital writing. So all these hospitals, at the end of the day, they want to market themselves to the patients, right? For hospitals, patients is the customer, right? So how hospitals do the marketing? They do marketing in two ways. One is the online, another one, one is the offline marketing. Online marketing, they use the social media platforms where, where they write blogs, they use Instagram, they use Facebook, they use YouTube. So writing content for patients on all these platforms is done by somebody uh, from their field, the, you know, the, either the medical writer or the doctor himself. Some hospitals have also hired medical writers who are interface between the doctors and the, you know, 
the hospital itself and they write content for all the social media platforms. The offline marketing content, which is like flyers or you know brochures or booklets, right? They're also written by doctors or medical writers and they're printed and they're kept uh, for marketing. So this is how you can be a you know hospital or content writer or content writer for patients uh, for helping them to market their products and services. All right, one question uh, is from Puneet, and this is an interesting question. I'll uh, ask uh, you know Sushmit to answer this question. If someone graduated from a tier two or tier three college, how can she or he get into this profession of medical writing? And his question again extends is having less knowledge about these types of profession and basic knowledge to crack interview of medical writing. So the there are two things which are associated with his question. One is this person is from tier two or tier three, which who has very basic knowledge about the subject and the field. And uh, he does not have this awareness about what is happening in the medical writing domain. So Sushmit, I want your answer on this. Okay. Yes, sir. this is very interesting question as said by Sir itself. So see, I will answer your first question ki if, tier, if you are in tier two or tier three college. See, uh, I will not tell, I will not discriminate between the things, but I will just tell you the fact. See, tier one college uh, has like placement assistance. They are central government funded institutions and all. So it is like ki all placement assistance and all campus recruitment it has and everything, every support we tier one uh, students get. Now, tier, coming to tier two, uh, tier two colleges, if I come here, then see, the one thing which lacks is key placement assistance and for that. So that is the major thing which lacks in tier two or tier three colleges. So the thing is key, how well you your personal brand is, that actually matters for tier two. Even it matters for tier one also. There are, you don't think, you know, everyone don't think like that key, all the persons in tier one college, they might get job or they might get be successful. Yeah, majority of one, they get jobs, but it is not some of the other persons are there ki in tier one also they lack the things. So it is not like ki you are from tier one college, so you will be getting, even if you don't perform well. In tier one also, you need to maintain your personal branding and how you showcase yourself. So that is the same thing for tier two also. Just the thing matters is ki you don't uh, get that, that placement assistance. Now coming to a second question. Now that is linked to a first question. As I told, you need to be develop the personal brand and that personal brand involves everything. Developing from your therapeutic area expertise or whatever you are doing in your college or how well you are equipped with science. So that, that develops. So anyway, you will be, you will be able to, you will have to develop the core scientific expertise in whatever things you are working, even if you are from the TL2 college and you need to build your personal brand and you need to approach your companies and how well your LinkedIn profile is, how well your CV is. So how well you showcase yourself in front of the recruiters through LinkedIn or through other job portals. So that comes into play. So for that reason, first of all, you need to develop the expertise. You cannot say like, okay, you have just a basic knowledge. You need to advance that knowledge and then you need to build your personal brand. So there will be no one stopping you, even if you are from the tier two or tier three to get into medical writing. So that is my answer. Absolutely. I'll just add a few points to what Sushmit told. Uh, you know, tier one and two and two uh, colleges are actually a good place to learn if you're really interested to. Okay, I have seen a lot of people with great knowledge coming in from tier two and tier three college. If you are really interested to make a difference in the lives of patients that you have decided when you got into the college, then these places are best because they have all the resources, but untapped resources, right? So all you need is to do that. The second part was Sushmit has beautifully told is personal branding. Now, personal branding is post-COVID, 100% it is needed. And if you are not present, if you are not seen, if you are out of sight, you are out of mind, right? I always keep saying, uh, saying this sentence. My boss used to say in my previous company that out of sight is out of mind. So if you're not present, if you're not visible to people, that means you don't exist. If you're not visible on LinkedIn, you don't exist. If you're if somebody is searching your name on Google and if you don't come there, come up there, that means you're not there. 
So what we have done is, you know, you know, during these past three years, I've been conducting these webinars and I've conducted a lot of webinars on LinkedIn also, how to use uh, your LinkedIn for personal branding and all of that. So if you're watching on YouTube, then there is a separate playlist called personal branding or professional branding. I don't remember. Or maybe you can search for LinkedIn and you'll get those videos. So please watch those videos and get started. Uh, you know, have a profile on LinkedIn, start posting some content, start interacting with people. This is the easiest way to gain knowledge. And the second question you said is basic knowledge or less knowledge. Today, everything is available on your fingertips. What information Sushmit has, I have. What is no information Avinash has, you also have, right? All you need is Google Baba and Google Baba will give you access to everything. Just filter out those information. Just don't get overwhelmed with the information that we are getting in today. There is there are multiple sources of information that we consume. There is a Google, there is YouTube, there is Instagram, there is Twitter, there is hundreds and hundreds of platforms which are available. Filter one or two platforms which are actually adding some value to you and then stick on to those platforms. If you want to get into medical writing, be part of medical writers community, be part of those groups. There are 25, 30 plus webinars I have done on, only on medical writing. So please watch them. You'll get a lot of insights from speakers like Sushmit. There are people who have spoken in length about medical writing. Next week, again, we have some session coming up on interviews, specifically on interviews, how to face interviews in medical writing, right? So do attend such webinars. You will be definitely have a good knowledge about this. Subject knowledge is something which you should do only, get only when you are in the college. Once you come out of the college, you cannot go back and read those syllabus books, right? It's not possible. So whatever possible knowledge you want to gain, please gain that when you are still in the college and try to apply those learnings once you come out of the college. Now, that is not happening right now. Okay, As we speak, there are hundreds and thousands of students who are dependent on some notes some small small guides just for the passing for the sake of passing exams now if you are learning like this then it is a challenge it is definitely a problem right i did my uh, schooling uh, entire life of uh, you know mine has gone into schooling from government college government school and then government college i have never ever gone for any kind of tuitions when I went into pharmacy, I did my B-Pharm. I was more interested in doing M-Pharm in pharmacology. I never got a chance. There was only one option for me, and that was pharmacognosy, okay? If you know pharmacognosy, then give me a you know thumbs up. So pharmacognosy is something which is study of herbal drugs, right? And that was the least preferred department. Even today, not many people prefer pharmacognosy as a subject. So when I got into pharmacognosy, I was completely in shock, right? But I got in pharmacognosy because... I had qualified gate and I was getting scholarship and I had only one choice to get into government college. I don't, I didn't have much choice and liberties at that point of time, right? So I did my MPharm and then when I was doing my MPharm, I was very much interested in writing, okay? So I used to write. I was also creating mock tests for gate exams and all of that. So I was freelancing at that point of time and this helped me to improve my communication skills and also it helped me I should thank my, uh, I must thank, thank my seniors. I thank, I must thank my professors who really helped me to gain a lot of pharmacology knowledge because I was very much interested in pharmacology. There are some seniors who really, uh, you know, invited me to the labs and gave me a lot of knowledge and gyan on pharmacology. And this really helped me to uh, deep dive into medical writing. Okay. And this has really helped. So, in no way your education or tier two or tier one or government college or private college defines your knowledge. If you're interested to gain knowledge, all these adversities can actually play a big role in getting uh, gaining a lot of knowledge. So focus on what you want to learn. And when you are in college, this is again for all my freshers uh, and friends who are still in the college, please focus only on learning. Don't focus on passing the exams. That eventually you'll pass the exam, right? Today, passing exam is very easy. You have a lot of sessional marks and you have a lot of very less theory marks. So passing exams is not a problem. So focus only on gaining knowledge. Try to gain as much knowledge as possible. And once you come out of the college, don't wait for that time to make your visibility online and connect with your seniors. You should start connecting with your seniors even before you come out of the college. No, this is a big mistake, right? You have completed the college and then suddenly you reach out to seniors saying, please help me for a job. 
why that they will help you for a job you have never interacted you have never bothered to connect to that person right so if you have alumni network please use that learning network connect with your seniors take their help in building the relationship first and then ask for a job don't ask for a job if you have not built that relationship okay that person is not interested to refer if you have not built your relationship absolutely important and this is for all the freshers and if you're if you know freshers please pass on this message to them people will not refer you if you have not built relationships with them right and today referral system in pharmaceutical industry and healthcare industry accounts for more than 80 percent of the jobs okay so if you want to get referred build that relationship okay all right thank you so much i was not interested to get that give all the gan to you but you know sometime emotion flows and we start giving the gan right all right thank you so much for asking that and we will have one more question one question from my farm side can d pharma also apply for medical writing d pharma is uh, you know d pharma is a two year degree it's a very very basic diploma in pharmacy degree so normally you don't get a chance to get into core medical writing but if you have a good knowledge, you can definitely try medico marketing writing, which is done by most of the pharmaceutical companies. Now, the pharmaceutical companies need somebody to help them in creating content for their products and brands for marketing purpose, for posting on social media, right? Doing all of this writing small, small blogs. You can try that and please do higher education, okay? Go for a higher education and go for it, right? All right. So... Next question is, how can we get information about companies that there are openings, hirings about medical writing? So follow Sushmit and follow me on LinkedIn. Follow Avinash on LinkedIn. All right. We keep posting a lot of such information on LinkedIn. And if you are part of my groups, then automatically you'll get the information. LinkedIn is the best option for you to get all this information. And if you are following certain companies, so my suggestion is if you're a fresher, you want to get into some company, make a list of 10 companies where you want to try for jobs. Follow them, follow them and connect with their employees. Try to build that relationship and try to get a referral from them. This will definitely help. Okay. All right. We'll take one more question. This question is from Sushmit. Okay. Uh, what kind of skills we need to mention on resume for medical writing? Sushmit. See, uh, main thing as I discussed in my slides also, be transparent and be yourself. Okay, yeah. don't mention anything which doesn't match the thing or which you are not, uh, which which you are not well acquainted with, with that. And you just mention for the sake of uh, getting a, or getting a CV screen at the first moment. So that is not the thing. But a uh, few of the things, if I come for medical writing, then uh, skills which you can mention is key presentation skills. From yeah. my entire lecture, you can understand that okay, one skill is so sure ki you need to be presentation skills. Second one is will be communication skills. And trust me, I don't think these kind of skills are actually tailor made for medical. Every <laughs> every other field for job. When I was uh, screening the CVs for my juniors or uh, for my subordinates, because I was the placement cell head of that uh, of my department. So I was able to screen their CV. So it is like ki, whether it is a business analyst position, whether it is a medical writing position, the, some skills are common, like communication skills, presenting skills. So I don't think ki, any specialized skill which you can mention for medical. You have to impress the interviewer whenever, uh, if you get selected or you can, uh, that time you can impress the interviewer with your skills. But don't mention like, ki, uh, I can write the science or uh, I am, don't mention like, ki, uh, Effective communication in science. Their their CV will be uh, will be shown a red flag there. Okay, writing effective because that signifies that you are something mimicking or you are like ki, something copying like the JD. So it's not like ki, the JD has to be copied in the skill set. Mention the some generic skills, but that time whenever your CV, but see for getting filtered or getting selected CV selected. See for any medical writing CV. What are the major things which you can expect? The main things which, which you can expect is the accuracy in the language. Means uh, I have seen many of the students also, not from, um, it might be from tier one, tier two or anywhere. So I have seen those CVs that it has some grammatical errors or it has some, some of the inaccuracies. One point has been shifted to another point and it has no correlation with one another. So that kind of CVs must not be there for medical writing. At least 
when you are applying for any job which is related to writing so first and foremost thing your evaluation will be done on the basis of cvs not on the basis of how skills you, which you are mentioning all the hygiene check of the cv must be done all the at least your sentence structuring must be proper so that kind of thing it is not related to the skills in medical writing which you need to align there in cv so sir can add to this absolutely the first thing first is you know always remember this okay the hrs who look at your cv are not medical writers okay that is the first thing the second thing is always remember that hrs get about 6 to 8 seconds to see look at it as cv okay so all they want is whether you are matching the profile the hr has asked or not right so how do you do that just below your name right what you can do is that one paragraph about you where you are writing you can mention the key skills that you have based on the job description okay and don't put stories okay i see some of the medical writing cv is putting hobbies as dancing and music and all of that okay then some medical writers they have done mpharm and then phd they write uh, their sslc and 10 standard marks not needed right always we want to see the highest qualification that you have the rest of the skills are not needed dancing has nothing to do with medical writing so please don't mention such skills just a waste of time of the hr okay put only the skills that the hr can see and find you as the most ideal candidate for that vacancy okay put yourself in the shoes of hr for 10 seconds and evaluate your cv for 8 seconds okay and see if you like your cv as a hr if you like your cv as a hr then post it otherwise don't simple way all right okay thank you for that and i hope we answered that we'll take one more question uh, this is from puneet on youtube and puneet asked how can we, can we expect a webinar on regulatory and clinical research yes puneet we have already done that so if you are watching this on youtube then you can go to the playlist uh, which is on medical pharm uh, pharmacy careers there are 75 plus videos these are the recordings of the past webinar so check out the one on clinical research and there are two or three videos on regulatory affairs also all right okay so we covered that i think we answered most of the questions we have taken too much of your time and i think it was useful no problem sir no problem i enjoyed it yeah we i enjoyed personally and you know being Thanks present so is most important i really respect uh, you know abhinash who who attends all these webinars and one fine day even sushmit was attending one of these webinars on medical writing and that changed his life forever right so please attend these webinars these are people we take lot of effort to bring these people we work on the presentations we work on the slides we create this content for you there is lot of effort which goes into putting uh, you know having these webinars so attend these webinars share this uh, you know uh, webinars with others so that we all can learn better okay so thank you so much everyone for your time any final words uh, for fresher sushmit from your side yes my final words will be see one thing you need to be show empathy towards the organization okay see your managers or your senior writers who are uh, whom you are reporting to they are also humans okay so just put yourself in their shoes absolutely for at least for some time and then you expect ki how how you will you will feel if the uh, your reporty is not functioning well or if he is not performing well yeah they are also humans so you need to provide them also security see ultimate goal is see when you are writing that self but in the content development steps i have shown you the flow chart final sign off is from the sm who is responsible for the final content he is the sm if there is something quality problem in your uh, it is if your quality of the draft is deteriorating and if the client is not satisfied he may blame sme not you that is the main thing so for that reason also if your first draft or if your performance is good so keep that thing in the mind and keep good performance if you keep good performance no one is going to stop you from progressing and trust me you will be rewarded provided the industry is in that level you you will be rewarded but in any other way you will be always rewarded for the showing excellence in performance and each and everything and always show empathy whenever someone asks you some something gives you some task 
then think of that ki you are in the position of them and how you will expect ki your reporting will function or how they have to be function so just assume yourself as a thing and second point is ki always aim high means always think have some ambition it is not like ki you come to uh, you get placed in a reputed company these i always tell to my niper students also and other tier 1 institutions also students also whom i know i always think ki whether you are from the niperians or whether you are from ictians or any other institution you get the job okay you get the job and you can easily get through campus recruitment and through preparation level but once you get into job you forget that ki you are from tier 1 or any other that you need to forget you cannot keep that attitude ki okay i am of that institution so i will perform in any other way i will be progressing it is not the case it is all for all the colleges so i am not discriminating just for the sake of telling just for encouraging this other institutions also i told this thing ki even tier 1 students are also uh, they should also help or they also should uh, progress and they also should take pains to progress in corporate it is not like ki so it it applies for everyone the thing so main thing is ki first is empathy second thing is ki building your performance it, sorry in that manner so whenever you build your performance no one will be uh, no one will be stepping or no one uh, there is no hurdle for your progress so always progress in that manner and aim higher always aim to become an sme whenever you are in the some you are whenever you are in the junior position you aim how can i reach the senior position the person without aim he will, he or she will not progress definitely i am I mark my words those yes, who yes. are having the aim they can progress because through aim you will have your goals and through that goals you will have your action plans so execute that aim this thing though it is not like okay i received a job okay now just i will uh, work from 9 to 5 and i will enjoy the weekends at my home and the ha huh, you have to enjoy the thing it is i am not telling you okay, you need to don't don't maintain work life balance you need to enjoy the weekends also but not the thing ki uh, okay i am satisfied each and everything okay you always aim higher how can i progress towards the managerial level at at after 4 to 5 years how i see myself at that position so first thing is uh, this empathy and second thing is always dream higher and aim higher that will help you to progress so these are my final words for the session love it thank you so much sushmit and that was you know wonderful one and i i can just tell you everything in one sentence your attitude decides your altitude okay so have a great attitude okay and don't forget your roots some some days you know sushmit was a student some day he was behind the scenes watching one of the webinars now he is a speaker but he has not forgotten that right he always remembers that so always try to aim higher and bring people when once you reach to that higher level right try to help others that is going to help you along that all right so thank you so much everyone for being with us thank you sushmit for being with us it was great having you here one more time we'd love to have you one more time here and then we'll learn something else one as we progress right so we'll okay. keep doing these webinars uh, you know every saturday uh, the time is changed now earlier first two years i did for at 2 o'clock in on the saturdays and then lot of you sent me email saying that let's do in the evening because due to college and due to this that we are not able to attend during the afternoon so i changed the time to 6:30 and then from july onwards from today onwards the webinars will be on at 6:30 on saturdays right so all these webinars past recordings you can watch on the youtube channel and upcoming webinars uh, stay connected with sushmit abhinash myself and on linkedin to get notified all right so stay connected if you are somebody who is exploring to get into medical writing the next week's webinar will be very important uh, it, it is by one of very super senior of mine in medical writing domain and he'll be talking about how to get into medical writing how to crack those interviews so his focus this will be a very focused one it will be only on cracking interviews and how to prepare for the interviews what kind of interviews happen and all of that will be learning this will be happening either next week or after that so stay tuned for more information about that and stay connected uh, if you are uh, you know if you have registered on zoom then you will be getting an email uh, the email will contain the recording link and also the linkedin profile of abhinash and sushmit so abhinash focuses on uh, pharmacovigilance he talks a lot of content about pharmacovigilance so focus on that if you want to learn 
Sushmit is a medical writer, so he'll be learning a lot on medical writing. And learning all these different domains is absolutely important because as a medical writer, we are a connecting point. We connect the dots between different departments in the healthcare system, right? So stay connected, keep learning, stay blessed, and all the best for your futures. Keep learning and we'll meet again next week. All right. Thank you so much, Sushmit, for your time. And thank you so much, everyone, for being with us on YouTube and also on Zoom. We'll meet again next week. I'm stopping the live session on YouTube. Okay. All right. Thank, thank, thank you, you participants. And thank you, sir, for this opportunity. And My I am pleasure. actually very happy so that every participant, actually, like Abhinash and many other persons, they are actually looking at webinar. They actually provided the feedback. Actually, I am happy for this thing. Everyone loved that webinar and at least someone got benefited from that. 100%, 100%. If you are doing in good faith, everything will be good. So this is what I believe. Uh, you know, when I started my first webinar, uh, we had few people attending. One of the webinars, we had 3000 plus live people attending the sessions. So, so far we have covered more than 25, 30,000 people attending these webinars, right? So somewhere people's lives are getting changed. That's what we believe. So thank you so much for being with us and stay tuned for more updates on different webinars and sessions. Stay connected on LinkedIn for and start networking with people. If you have not started, please network with people. It is definitely 